Hello and welcome. Today I'll be showing you guys how to make a throne room for your V Rising castle. This video is the fifth and final video of a five part series. Each part will show a different example and time lapse of how each one was made. I'll be explaining the process throughout each build so that you too can make an awesome throne room for your castle. I've also made several other videos on castle building and I'll be linking those in the description below. All right, now let's get started. This next build is what I like to call the Caged Throne. This is another outdoor castle build, but with a tall building behind it rather than around it. For this build, I started working on the outside. Of course, at first I already knew I wanted to have a caged in outdoor feel for the first floor. I added the throne and originally I was going to go with the Throne of Darkness, but I ultimately ended up going with the Gloomrot Throne instead. You'll see that change later on in this video. At this point, I was just building the second floor, trying to get the columns set up, trying to get the height of everything correct, because I knew I could always go back and make some changes to try and get the desired shape I wanted. These staircases that you see in the center of the build eventually do get deleted and I ended up moving some staircases to the back of the area behind the throne. It took a little bit of trial and error trying to get the staircases to behave and place themselves in a way that I liked. and. I did have a little bit of a hard time trying to get it to align in a way that I really liked in general. Because of the limitations with the staircases and not being able to place them freely, I decided to kind of just make a second floor that would just kind of go around the outside of the area. As you can see, I went through a lot of trial and error here with the staircases. That was probably the hardest part of this build, honestly. Originally, I was going to kind of add a solid ground to the ground floor, but ultimately I ended up changing that as well. You'll see that later in the build. Behind the area where I would eventually put the throne, I had to make an enclosed building because I wanted to make it seem like the throne was just sitting caged outside, but it was still um, part of the castle. I added more caging to the outside. When I say caging, I mean that it kind of just looks like a cage in general. Again, I started thinking about using the Throne of Darkness here, but as soon as I realized how much space that throne actually took up in this area, and I knew I wanted to add more flowers and shrubbery and things, I did end up changing it later. Um, I started messing around with the walkways, trying to figure out how I wanted to lay it out first, kind of pre-planning the setup, and I wanted there to be symmetry because again, going back to those basic principles, going back to the basic uh, things we've learned earlier in the series, we want to have a little bit of symmetry. I started placing some cypress trees, making sure that everything I placed was an exact replica on both the left and right sides. At this point, I added some white cherry blossoms. I really love those trees. They're so cool looking. Added a couple statues in the back, and this is the part where I decided, you know what? I'm gonna get rid of the Throne of Darkness. It takes up too much space, and I wanted to have something a little bit more inviting. So I decided to go with the Gloomrot Throne. 
as you can see, I was tediously going around trying to make sure that my placement of the flowers was going to be aligned correctly. It was a little bit of a challenge. I also started experimenting a little bit with statues, trying to figure out what statues I wanted in each corner. Once I figured that out, I just continued to place some plots. And it was a little bit of a challenge trying to get the flowers to not clip too, too much through the statues. This part is really tedious, but when it's done, I think it was totally worth it. And of course, we can't have an outdoor throne without any mist braziers. We need to have those. By using different plot types for the flowers, I created artificial spaces where certain groups of flowers look like they just belong to each other or belonged in a group. And then I ended up using the bleeding hearts at the end. It's rare that I get to use this flower in any of my builds because it has a very distinct look to it that I haven't quite figured out how to work out yet uh, because it is a newer flower. But I think I did a pretty good job of lining everything up. I rotated the flowers as I went to make sure that they were all facing the same direction from each corner so that there weren't any uh, stragglers in the group. I went back into the sky, got an aerial view, got a better idea of what I wanted to accomplish here. And I went behind the throne, added some stuff to the bag. I was thinking a little bit about what I wanted to do. I sped up time. I wanted to see what the flowers and trees looked like fully bloomed. Then I checked from the sky and I was pretty satisfied with that. So I ended up moving on to the third floor, actually skipping the second floor for a little bit. And I decided to add a little bit of extra area to hang out in. Um, but I also wanted to kind of create a storeroom for the plants and types of shrubbery we have outside, of course. I was experimenting with the colors here, but I ultimately went with black. I think black was a very solid color to go with here. I didn't want anything that was too visibly different from the surrounding wallpaper because the wallpaper in the flooring has a lot going for it. So I didn't want to overwhelm the space with too much detail. added a few wine cases just for a little bit of extra pizzazz, of course. And with the lighting, I was kind of careful about the lighting. I wanted to make sure there was plenty of lighting around the bookcases and not so much right on top of the sofa area in front of the fireplace. I ended up adding two of the standing books there because I figured, well, if anyone needs to look up any kind of plants or anything, they can probably find it in one of those books. And I also added some white light to make sure it was easy to read. I also wanted to make it distinct from the fireplace, which has a natural light. So I wanted to make sure that the spaces look distinct from the fireplace. At this point, I started messing around with uh, draperies, trying to choose a color. And I started working on the third floor balcony area, which was a square around the throne. I had a little bit of fun playing with the shrubbery here, just trying to get different kinds of uh, colors and combinations to look right. And of course I went with a white lighting for the balcony area. At this point, I knew I wanted to have a chandelier somewhere above the throne, but also have one on the second floor above the throne. This was a little bit of a challenge and you'll see what I mean later on. I made a couple of mistakes while first placing these down, so I ended up having to remove some and go back and revise. Uh, 
I also had some planters to separate things out just to create a little bit more visual variety. I didn't want too many hedges too close to each other and I needed spaces of separation. Added a couple of bird baths, and then at this point, I went to the second floor and started working on that. I added some nice windows so that behind the throne in the building above, there would at least be some kind of windows so that people can look outside and see the beautiful garden. I really like the pieces from the Castlevania set. I really think that they did such a wonderful job on the wallpaper. It looks so cool. And the fact that you have so many different variations of that wallpaper, it just, I mean, the possibilities are endless, really. And of course, the second floor was more of an herb storage room because obviously you have to pull the plants from the first floor, so you're not wanting to carry them all the way to the third floor. That's why there's so few of the storages on the third floor. And of course, on the second floor here, you can also see me working on some other stuff. I end up closing out uh, one of the rooms. I wish that we had a piece that would just block out an entire room so that it was just at least filled with something. Uh, cause I don't like hiding rooms like that, and I ultimately ended up putting an invisible foundation just to hold that place. At this point I started messing around, trying to see how many of these storage containers I could possibly squeeze in this room. And of course we can't, uh, have a room like this without placing our flowers. And as you saw there, I rotated those bleeding hearts in the planter. That way the plants looked as big as possible. At this point, I started messing around with the lights, trying to get the skylights to work out. And we're done. So what do you guys think of this build? Did you like the caged throne? Is this something you'd consider adding to your castle? Let me know in the comments below. For those of you who don't know, my name is Sholo Q. I'm a Sholoeth Quintly, Reaper, and Guide to the Underworld. I stream three times a week on Twitch, Kick, and YouTube, and you can find me playing V Rising usually on Wednesdays. I hope to see you there. If you like this video, please leave a like, share, and subscribe, and as always, Sholo out.